In this video, I want to introduce something called the principle of mathematical induction, and I'm going to explain what it is and why it works intuitively. So the principle of mathematical induction. This is one of the most fundamental proof techniques in all of mathematics. Principle of mathematical induction. We can abbreviate the principle of mathematical induction using three letters. Uh, the typical letters we use are PMI, so P-M-I. So what does it say and what is it for? So it's a proof technique and it allows you to prove things regarding a positive integer n. So first, let s sub n be a statement. about a positive integer n. So about a positive integer n. So any statement about a positive integer n. So as an example, s sub n could be the statement that the sum from 1 of 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus n is equal to n times m plus 1 over 2. So this could be our statement. This could be your s sub n. So if you wanted to prove that this equation is true for all positive integers n, you would use this technique, this principle of mathematical induction. So what does it, the principle say? It says if 1. So if the statement is true when you plug in 1, so if s sub 1 is true and 2 for any k less than or equal to n whenever SK is true, so is S sub K plus 1. So if you have these two conditions, so whenever S1 is true, and if SK is true, so is S sub K plus 1. So if these two conditions are satisfied, and the principle of mathematical induction says that our statement is true for every positive integer n. So then s sub n is true for all positive integers n. Positive integers n. So in this video, I want to explain why. So why does this imply the result of mathematical induction. And this is something that's very difficult to understand. I remember when I was first learning this, I, I read the book over and over and over and over, and it kept giving me some analogy regarding dominoes, and I didn't get it, and I never did, and it took me years. So hopefully this will make some sense to you. So our goal is to intuitively justify why our statement is true for all positive integers n, given that we have these two conditions. This is our hypothesis. So first of all, we know it's true for 1. When n equals 1, it's true, because s sub 1 is true. That's by 1. By our first condition, s sub 1 is true. So now we need to figure out why is it true when we plug in 2. Well, according to the second condition, whenever sk is true, so is s sub k plus 1. Well, we know s1 is true. So by condition 2, s sub 1 plus 1 is true. Right? If k is 1, then we get 1 plus 1. But 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So s sub 2 is true. Again, we know that s1 is true by our first condition. And since s1 is true, 
By condition 2, whenever S1 is true, so is S2. Using the same argument, we can say, okay, now we know S2 is true. So by, three, by 2, I was going to say 3, that's wrong. So by 2, S sub 2 plus 1 equals S sub 3 is true. Check. And we do it again. So now we know S3 is true. So by 2, S sub 3 plus 1 equals S sub 4 is true, etc. And you just keep going on forever. So it ends up being true for all positive integers n. I hope this video has helped you understand why induction actually works. So when you're doing an induction proof, you follow certain steps. There's a step called the induction hypothesis. There's a step called the base case. And you'll see that in the videos that follow. But in this video, I wanted to just try to explain why the statement works. That's it.